Welcome champions, this is the RPA champion and in today's video we are going to be looking at something very interesting, the future of RPA. The objective of the video will be to share my insight into the RPA market, the robotic process op operating market and uh, share what I have been noticing and how I think the industry is about to change. Why this is important? It's important because if the industry is going to change you should be aware of this, you should get ready, prepare, learn the new technology, learn the new skills that you have to do and keep staying competitive on the marketplace. This new, if this technology breaks through, you will, uh, and it gets adopted in more and more companies, there is going to be a large demand for this, therefore it will be, it will be in high demand and finding opportunities for job will be, uh, will be greater. Therefore, sit back in your chair, grab a cup of tea, and listen to what I have to say. So, what is RPA? Before we answer the question about the future of RPA, it is important to understand what RPA is. RPA, in just a few sentences, for those that are not aligned, RPA is robotic process, uh, robotic process automation, and is basically the automation of repetitive processes. Inside of large organizations and also small organizations, these companies are built on processes that employees do to uh, manage everyday business. Now, the majority of these processes or certain parts in these processes can be repetitive and manual in nature. This is where RPA steps in. RPA robotic process automation with a set of uh, software vendors that provide low-code tools allow companies to automate this manual and repetitive tasks. So just imagine it as if you are recording an employee that they are doing certain things and just playing that back in loop a gazillion number of times. So this is basically what RPA is. Now when you mix RPA with artificial intelligence or more cognitive tools, now you are able to automate more and more of the same processes. So you are striving or going to end-to-end -end automation, meaning automating a business process from the beginning until the end. And when you achieve something like this, you do not require any more employees that are going to be helping you run and manage your business. So uh, this is what artificial intelligence and RPA is. RPA is the foundations for implementing AI inside of your system or it makes it much more easier. Why? Because many AI processes, they rely on certain repetitive activities to happen either before or after. Therefore, uh, the integration between the two is uh, very important for achieving automation and also for all of the software vendors that are being that are in the market space, that are doing RPA technologies, it is very important that they also bring AI capabilities, which they are at an incredible space. Now, so now that we understand what RPA is, robotic process automation, just a tool that helps, a low, low code tool that helps companies automate repetitive and manual tasks. Now let's take a look at the main software vendors. And to do this, I have decided that we should take a look back in time and start from 2018 from the Gartner uh, from the Gartner Magic Quadrant for RPA and take a look at how things have changed. Now here I don't have the uh, Gartner. I have um, I have something similar. What is this? Uh, this is the uh, Peak Matrix Assessment from I, I'm not sure which company, but it just shows us what the objective is that these these guys are always the same. UiPath, Blue Prism, Automation, and Work Nice. Totonomy, Totonomy was purchased by Blue Prism. Uh, these are, these have been always the market leaders. So if we take a look at 2018, we have UiPath, Blue Prism, and Automation Anywhere. Automation Anywhere leading. Now, if we go to the Magic Quadrant from 2019, this is from Gartner. Now we can see that there is a clear distinction between the uh, between the between the different groups. Now, when we're looking at the magic quadrant, it is also important that we understand uh, how it's divided. So it's divided into four categories. We have the challenges, the niche players, the visionaries, and the leaders. Obviously, the leaders are the ones that are currently leading the market. The visionaries are the ones that are uh, that have just entered the market space or have an innovative breakthrough product. So if we notice here, uh, in 2018, we don't see anything about Microsoft or anything uh, similar. So we see that we have work, work fusion, Pega system is trailing along fine, and we have also soft modding. Now things are going to start consolidating in the following year. So Blue Prism has bought uh, has bought uh, autonomy, 
and also we see that soft motive is still here now UI part is leading the is currently leading the uh, RPA uh, market in the in the garden quarter now when we move to the following year 2020 uh, we see that uh, we still have the same the same presence of the same uh, the same companies as leaders in the market space but we notice something else that there is very highly ranked inside of the visionaries almost above almost in front on the uh, completeness of the vision in front of everybody else we have microsoft we also notice that there is no soft motive anymore here now soft motive was purchased by microsoft uh, and together with their tool they have really uh, they have really set a new a new uh, a new objective for everybody else to reach so this is the gartner the gartner uh, magic quadrant for rpa for the year 2020 it will be very interesting to see what the quadrant will hold for 2021 will microsoft pass from the visionaries into the leaders with the purchases and the modifications that they have made now just uh, a little bit to strengthen this point let's take a look at the google trends now if we go to google trend and we search for power automate ui path blue prism automation anywhere we are going to notice the trends through time now uh, if we change our google trends from a period of five years to get really an idea of how things have been trending we can see that uh, mostly in 2016 uh, all of the software vendors automation anywhere was mainly was mostly the leader uh, together with uh, with uh, blue prism uh, power automate didn't even exist uh, well it did exist but it was <laughs> it was not very used it was very technical it was uh, it was not very utilized uh, the uh, the functionalities of it were not very well perceived or very well needed for the technology and for the time that we were living in i'm not even sure if it existed in 2016. Uh, as we uh, as we move on in time we can see that uh, uipath started picking up and due to the fact that uipath was a freeware tool uh, meaning that anybody could uh, install it use it and adopt it they had an incredible boom in uh, in search term, people were interested in UiPath much more than in the other technologies like Automation Anywhere or Blue Prism. It is not my personal opinion. This is Google Trends that are <laughs> that are showing us. So I I don't really have a preference for any of the tools right now. I am I am certified in all of the four tools. I am right now focused in what the market is telling me and where the market is pointing me. So now if we focus into this space that is of the last few months we can notice that there is an incredible boom in uh, well in ui part also but also in power automate it is surging uh, it is surging very fast and if we just zoom in to the let's zoom into the past 30 days we can see that it is almost uh, almost trailing along with uh, with UiPad. This is incredible because UI pa uh, Power Automate has just emerged and Power Automate is also just one of the tool that Microsoft is providing for automation. Now, with all of this said, what is the objective and the point of all of this? So we've seen where the trends are going. We've seen the evolution of RPA vendors through time. Now, where does this leave us? Focus is on the Power platform the power platform is a set of tools from microsoft that allow us to automate our processes now let's understand a little bit more about the power and the power platform the power platform gives us basically uh, four tools it gives us power bi power bi is a tool that allows us to get insight in our data it gives us power apps power apps allows us to create apps and basically turn our ideas into solutions really quickly at a citizen developer level meaning that anybody now in our organization with a little bit of training without the knowledge of that much knowledge of code can use power apps to build applications inside of their company there is also power automate power automate is the uh, tool that allows us to uh, automate repetitive and manual activities and tasks and there is also 
virtual agents. Now, virtual agents are a tool that uh, allows us to create chatbots and uh, very easily and in a very uh, in a very fast way as well. Now, why is all of this great? Now, this is really great because all of this Microsoft tool, they all integrate into the Microsoft ecosystem, into Dynamics, into Office, and they all talk to each other. Obviously, they talk also with the outside world, but they're all integrated together, part of the same vendor, part of the same solution. It is also important to say that Microsoft has also bought SoftMotive that gives it that uh, additional edge to automate the desktop uh, desktop applications that are manual and repetitive. Therefore, it has really completed its suite of uh, tools. Power Automate also allows you to integrate with uh, the AI Builder. AI Builder gives you very strong AI capabilities that uh, are already integrated inside of the RPA, inside, inside of the automation technology. Therefore, it makes everything really easy, really quick. One more thing that I want to mention about the uh, Power Platform that I haven't noticed about the other vendors is that inside of the Solutions tab here, inside of Power Automate, it has already started coming up with pre-built complex solutions. What do I mean by that? Solutions such as um, Solutions such as uh, a full process for automating invoices, for example, and that you deploy just with a click and with just minimal configuration. Now, this is where ideally everybody would strive to be. But if you are using Microsoft services and you have Dynamics and many of your systems are on Microsoft, all of this integration becomes much easier and right out of the box, RPA processes become much easier to implement with much less configuration. Now, having said all of that, you can make up your own mind what technology you should be focusing on and what skills you should be uh, learning and developing. However, as we have seen from the market and from uh, the trends, uh, Power Automate or the Microsoft tools are becoming ever more present. They are also very competitive in terms of pricing uh, compared to the other vendors and I predict my prediction is that we are going to be seeing more and more of this and this is going this is an early call for uh, for everybody that is interested in RPA to start adopting these technologies start learning them start getting into them and start understanding how they can help on the current processes why because uh, processes that I have built with power automate uh, they are relatively easy cheap and quick to build they also allow for very good maintenance updating integration and so on therefore it is a really 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 great technology and i invite you once again to check it out i am not sponsored by power automate or microsoft even though i am open to sponsorships from microsoft and power automate anyways i hope this video about rpa and about the future of rpa was insightful that you have learned something uh, please uh, i have shared some um, some maybe opinionated things and things that uh, I have seen from my own experience. If you disagree with any of the things that I have said, please share the comments below and I will get back to you and we can maybe discuss your, the points that you have uh, that you have raised or I could even make a video that will answer any comments that you might have. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day.